Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer version 2 to create a Tumblr mockup. Rather than take a photo, which I use for reference, I would like to create the tumblers as a vector shape to make it more flexible to work with later on. The shape isn't that complex. I take the reference image to get the proportions right use the pen tool and create a rough outline of one half of the tumbler. I don't need to try and curve it symmetrically if I can just duplicate and mirror it later. I go in with the node tool to get the curves right. For curved corners like the lip at the top, the corner tool is ideal. The other key feature is the line between the top and the lid. I duplicate the two shapes, mirror them, combine the two sides of the tumbler with the boolean edge and connect the two nodes for the gap with the join curves. To get a nice curve for the base, I use the convert to smooth for the center node. With the base shape in place, I can start coloring. I start with a darker gray. Keeping the tumbler in grayscales allows me to add the color via the design later on. For the shading, I use a duplicate of the base shape, squash it slightly and blur it. I place that one inside the base shape using the base as a clipping mask. Adding transparency starts giving me the idea of roundness for the tumbler. The dividing line has a highlight and a shadow line, so I duplicate that one and then continue working on the highlights, adding a duplicate of my highlight shape for the stronger highlights on the left hand side. With more complex light setups, it helps to put markers in for the light sources. Based on the reference photos, I have three light sources. The main light source comes from the top left. There is a light source from the right hand side and a lesser rim light from the lower left. I use the shapes I've already created for the tumbler. They match the curve on the outside to create my highlight shapes using the boolean subtract to cut the highlight into the right shape. It is faster than trying to curve it with the node tool. I do the same thing at the top using the existing shapes, duplicating them to give me the highlight for the lid. I adjust my highlights slightly and with just four shapes inside the clipping mask, I'm starting to get a tumbler that has depth. I turn the reference image back on to see how it compares with the photo. There are minor changes, but Overall, once the design is on, it should work fine. The advantage of working with the vectors is I can place my image underneath my highlights. By adjusting the blend modes, I can then make them mix with the design and look more realistic than pasting the design on top of a mock-up photo. I'm adjusting the highlights adding an extreme highlight a little bit off the left hand side to match the photo. The amount of tweaking you're willing to do depends on the level of realism you're trying to achieve. I am happy with where I am now, so I'm duplicating the tumbler for the left and right hand side. I adjust the highlights to match the light sources. The left tumbler gets more light on the left. The right one has a stronger light due to the light source on the right. After tweaking the blur, the opacity and the transparencies of my highlight shapes, I'm adding the shadows, simple ellipses placed underneath the tumblers with a blur work nicely. I usually work with two, one for the strongest shadow close to the tumbler and a softer one for the larger shadow. 
I place those underneath all three tumblers. I can now take these tumblers and place them in a surrounding of my choice, like a stock photo. This is another stock photo or a custom built scene where I have a stock photo of the landscape and built the foreground from rectangles and a wood grain pattern. Working with a mainly grayscale wood allows me to modify that. I can add a color overlay, choose my color, I pick a color from the scene and then alter the blend mode from normal to say multiply to darken it or in this case I choose the color. I can then go in and change that brown to a more red or a more yellow tone, reduce the saturation, add more saturation, add more lightness to make it match the idea of A the background and B the tumblers. You can put a marble bench top in. It's all totally editable and that's where the big advantage of building it from scratch comes in. You are in control of your scene. After all this, it's time to place the design on top of the tumblers. The easiest way to do that would be to get a clipping mask, duplicate the three tumblers, combine them into one shape, use it as a clipping mask and place the design inside. I can then use the shapes I created for the highlight and place them on top. Even then, it still does not look right because you are not wrapping the design around the tumbler. You're just projecting it on top. It's quick, it's simple, but it doesn't feel right. Let's start by taking the design, turning it into a symbol. We're going to be using it three times for each of the tumblers. Go in and build a warp group for the tumbler. The design goes on and I need to deform it. The problem is my design does not have the right size. It's way longer. It covers the whole tumbler. I create a smaller shape that is just a segment covering the front of the tumbler. It's easiest to do that with straight lines. That way I can see the deformation right away. I add a warp group, choose a mesh and add additional nodes by clicking on the lines between existing nodes. I bring the nodes on either side inwards so you can see that the lines in the center are wider than the lines on the sides. This will deform the design to match the roundness of the tumbler. I also adjust the bottom of the warp group to match the curve. Then I bring in the sides where the tumblers curve in. They are thinner at the bottom than they are at the top. The design should reflect that. It is a little tricky playing around with the mesh group. The tools to do that are rather rudimentary. You have to move single or multiple nodes at a time, but you don't have the tools that you have with normal nodes. You can't tilt them, you can't rotate them. In this video, you can see I did speed it up slightly, but it still takes a while to adjust to the tumbler shape. When I turn the design back on, you can see odd deformations, especially around the eye there and the right hand corner. As soon as you change a handle, it causes a twist in the design. It takes a bit of fine tuning to look convincing and realistic.
but it's well worth it. Once you've set it up, it's a matter of copying and placing it inside the other tumblers. and then adjusting the symbol by simply moving the visible part of the design into position. With all three warp groups in place inside their respective clipping masks, I can turn off my helper lines. I now have one symbol inside three different clipping masks with the same warp group. I can go in and edit, add to it, change part of the design like the color and it will change all three symbols at once or I can completely change the symbols content by placing something else inside and it'll automatically adjust my scene for me. That's the idea of the mock-up that it's easy to change and alter to new designs. While the setup might have taken quite a bit, definitely more time than I thought it would, it is very easy and flexible to adjust change the design, change the background, and you can easily mock up different designs. Have a look at my mock-up of picture frames while you're at it. If you enjoyed this video and thought it was helpful, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, leave a like, and let me know what you want to see on this channel, and I will see you again soon.